Hey, what is up guys, it's Arbin Hardware, in today's video we're gonna build the best bot yet gaming PC under $500 that you can get in November 2020. We're gonna go over the whole building process from start to finish, we're then gonna fire up the PC and we're gonna look at what kind of frame rate you can expect in case you decide to build this PC too. And if you find anything you like, yeah, all items are linked up down below. Now at $500 you'll be able to run all games, both eSport and AAA titles with great results and 1080p resolution. Now, if you're spending no more than $500, you should expect silky smooth frame rate in 1080p. Anyway, this particular build, we have an AMD Ryzen 3 3100. This is a high clocked 4 core processor that is based on AMD's blazing fast 7 nanometer Sand 2 architecture. Now to get as much graphics performance as possible at this budget, we're gonna pair the CPU with the graphics card from eBay. We're choosing a graphics card that is priced between $90 and about $180. And I'm gonna give you guys the freedom of deciding which out of these 8 graphics cards to pick. But yeah, as we can see, regardless which one you end up picking, you should be able to run your favorite game with a satisfying frame rate and with graphics details at medium to even high or very high in many games out there. Now, in my particular case, yeah, I picked the GTX 970 as I think it offers stellar performance for its price. But yeah, there is no denying that the RX 570 that can be found for around $90 to $100 is a fantastic option as well. But yeah, we're gonna look into pricing for each specific card a bit later. Now for the rest of the system, we find 16GB of RAM, a 500GB SSD, all contained in an awesome Fantex case. And if you're only interested in a specific part of this video, timestamps can be found down below. Before we get started, I would really appreciate if you guys checked out the channel. On this channel, you mainly find PC building guides, but yeah, I occasionally also review gaming monitors. So be sure to drop a comment, let me know what you thought about the video, drop a like if you enjoyed the content, and make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode. So let's start with our motherboard. Now, although I am demonstrating on a Gigabyte B450M DS3H, which is a very reliable and powerful B450M motherboard for today's build, it is a little bit pricey. For that reason, I actually went with the ASRock B450M, coming in a little bit cheaper at $64. There are a few differences between these two. The ASRock board, for example, has a USB 3 Type-C on the back, which can be a nice bonus, however, this won't have any impact on the gaming performance, but more importantly right now, it is almost $10 cheaper on Amazon, making it the perfect motherboard for our $500 gaming PC build. Now for the processor for this build, I chose the Ryzen 3 3100. It has 4 cores and 8 threads with a base clock of 3.6 and 3.9 boosts. This 4 core chip offers fantastic gaming performance for its price tag and it can run any modern games and even upcoming games with ease at 1080 but even 1440 and even 4K is possible if you let's say decide to upgrade to a more powerful graphics card later on. Now, installing the processor is simple, locate the golden triangle. Now this triangle lines up with the triangle on our motherboard socket, so simply turn the CPU so that the triangles are matching up, open up the metal arm and drop down the processor into the socket, put down the metal arm and our CPU is installed. Now inside the CPU box we also find a heatsink and if you're not interested in doing you know, heavy overclocking, the included stock cooler is actually more than enough. The cooler installment is pretty simple, as we can see our motherboard comes with a retention frame pre-installed, but since we're using a cooler with springs rather than retention clips, we need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard and we do so by unscrewing the four screws holding it in place. If this is the first time you're installing the CPU cooler, there should be uh, some thermal grease pre-applied, otherwise you also need to apply some thermal paste on the CPU lid. Using a screwdriver, turn each spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler, further tightening each spring screw with a full turn. And then we just tighten them up until you feel resistance. Lastly, we connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the fan CPU header on the motherboard. 
Now we're almost done, the only thing missing is a ram sticks and for today's build I ended up picking this top of the line highly popular 16GB Vengeance LPX kit from Corsair. Now 16GB is more than enough for modern gaming and it was only a year ago that a bunch of games started to recommend that you had 12GB RAM installed so you will be sitting safe for a long time. So simply pull back the clips for the second and the fourth team slot and simply plug in the team slots just like so. Very easy right and now we can finally begin the real fun by installing our motherboard in our chassis. And for today's build we're gonna make use of the Fantex Eclipse 350X. This is one of my favorite body at mid tower chassis on the market coming in at $70. Now I know some of you guys aren't fans of solid fronts with lackluster airflow which yeah makes total sense and if good airflow is something you want you can just simply choose another case no problem. However if you decide to use this case you will still get safe thermals with no throttling. I've been using the Eclipse for I think two builds now and so far I've never had any heating problems at all. Now a single 120 fan comes included in case you like to expand with more airflow later down the road there is room to fit up to five 120 millimeter fans. He also got dust filters across every air intake. We got two RGB strips on the front as well as a third one that runs across the whole side just below the temper glass. In order to get access to the inside of our chassis we need to untie these four thumb screws that is holding the temper glass in place. And by having the CPU fan already installed we can just grab on to the CPU cooler and gently slide in the motherboard into place. And this can be done by having the case standing up or having it laying down. Now I actually prefer having it laying down. Now we secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided from Fantex. And with the motherboard installed and secured before we install our power supply, graphics card and storage, I figured this would be a good time to install our chassis cables that take care of the front audio, USB as well as the power button. So let's start with USB 3. This is a wide connector and it's fairly thick and it's almost impossible to miss. Simply just route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. And the connector is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Next up we got front audio. Now this cable goes to the left side corner. And lastly before we're done we got the front panel connector. This one we find on the lower right side. This can be a bit tricky guys but yeah just take your time. For the power supply for today's build I chose the Corsair CV 550 watt unit. This is a high quality power supply that got 80 plus bronze efficiency, got sleeved cables and it's coming in at just $58. As we are installing this you want to make sure that you got the fan facing downwards and gently slide it into place and secure it. So a couple of cables we're gonna need here. First up we got the 24 pin power connector for the motherboard. This one goes to the connector on the mid left side. Next up we got the 8 pin power connector for our CPU. And this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Now it is time to install our SSD and for today's build I ended up picking the Kingston A400 with 480GB of storage which yeah may seem a bit low for a gaming PC in 2020 however I still think it is the only option to go with for our $500 strict budget. 480GB is still enough to fit a few games and you can always upgrade to more storage later down the road as the case has room for two mechanical hard drives in the front and additional SSDs can be installed on the back as well. Plus you also find M.2 slots on the motherboard as well. In order to install our SSD we're gonna use one of these two SSD brackets. After securing the SSD with four screws provided by Fantex we put the bracket back and secure it. Plug in the SATA cable that comes with our ASRock motherboard as well as the SATA power connector coming from our power supply. Route a SATA cable through one of the routing holes and plug it in onto the motherboard. 
Now it is time to plug in our graphics card and for today's build, I picked this GTX 970 variant from MSI simply because of its excellent price to performance. This is a perfect pick for a $500 PC build and as I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video guys, right now you can get a lot of graphics horsepower for just $100 from eBay, enough performance to run even the most demanding AAA games in 1080p. But to give you guys more options, I decided to include H GPUs for today's build, all priced between $100 to about $190, and we're gonna look at the gaming performance in just a second. Now, in order to install a graphics card, we first need to take out two of these upper PCIe slots, and then we can just gently install a graphics card just like so. Plug in the PCIe cables, and our graphics card is now installed. Now last bit of advice, I decided to move the pre-installed 120 fan to line up a bit better with our graphics card for optimized cooling. The only thing missing now is to put the temper glass panel back on and we have officially completed our $500 gaming PC build. So let's turn on the system and see how it performs. Now for the very first time we boot up our system guys, we want to double check that our RAM sticks are running in so called XMP profile. So as we're starting up the PC and we're seeing the Ace Rock logo, you want to tap the delete key to get inside the BIOS. And once inside you navigate to OC Tweaker and you want to head down to load XMP settings and you want to pick the XMP profile, save all the changes and you're good to go. Alright, so time for some gaming and first up we got Fortnite and for this title I went with 1080p with competitive settings and this resulted in an average of well over 1 FPS on average with the GTX 970. Next up is Battlefield 5 running on the GTX 970 at ultra resulted in about 40 FPS on average while medium resulted in an average of 75 FPS so that seems to be the sweet spot for this particular GPU. Anyway here you can see what kind of frame rate you can expect running at max settings in 1080p with all GPUs included and as we can see 6 out of 8 cards are able to run Battlefield 5 in 1080 with great level of details while still reaching the magic 60 FPS mark. Now the RX 570 stands out with fantastic price to performance while the GTX 1650 falls a bit behind almost reaching 50 FPS on average. So with these benchmarks in mind if we take a quick look at the results from the current uh, market prices of all 8 GPUs and I came up with these numbers by averaging out the last 10 or 11 completed auctions on eBay. Anyway, as we can see, the RX 570 and the GTX 970 are on average selling for around $100, give or take a few dollars. With the benchmarks in mind, makes both these cards very interesting for its price to performance point of view. Moving on to Gears 5, running maxed out in 1080p. Now, as we can see, we aren't actually quite reaching 60 FPS here, but 8 out of 8 GPUs still manages to reach an average of almost 50 FPS. Remember guys, we are running maxed out here, so if we scale back to perhaps medium, should have you reaching 60 FPS, no problem. I also decided to run the built-in benchmark tool in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now maxed out, none of the graphics cards came close to the 60 FPS, so I decided to opt for medium instead, and that resulted in an average of 50-60 FPS using the GTX 970. So medium to high guys seem to be a great sweet spot for these graphics cards in general. Now taking a look at the current use pricing once more, having the benchmarks in mind, the 1060 and 970 or even the RX 570 are all fantastic options that you can pick up for around $100. But regardless which GPU you end up picking, you will get much more gaming performance per dollar versus if you let's say pick up a brand new graphics card, however I do understand that not all of you guys are interested in buying used PC parts with limited warranty, so for you guys, I also linked up a few budget picks that doesn't break the bank. Again, all PC components guys can be found down below. Now I am starting up a Discord server and it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join the awesome community and start discussing PC builds, issues and I don't know, <laughs> everything in between. So I'm going to hang out there and I'm going to answer any questions you guys might 
have so you guys you definitely want to join now watch either of these two videos and i will see you guys in the next video